I'm Al Phil Reese. I'm Anna Safford. And this is Mod Po Minute, actually five minutes. We're hoping to scratch the surface of a short poem that we like. So let's get started. Well, Anna, we have a poem by Robert Creeley called Just in Time, and this is for the first time ever we are going to wing it because we have decided just to hear the poem and talk. Let's We're not do it. ready. Okay. Just in time for Anne. Over the unwritten and under the written and under and over and in back and in front of or up or down or in or in place of of not of this and this of all that is of it. Wow. Mm. Okay. Start us off. Well, certainly an exercise in prepositions. Okay. Right? Yeah. Steinian. Um, almost Steinian. It is almost Steinian. Yeah, 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 there's a real Steinian play mm. with imagining all kinds of different positionings of words. Like, right. what happens when we... Um, a lo- reminds you a little bit of um, not just Tender Buttons, but of the portrait of Picasso. Really, sure. that play with prepositions, that play mm. with, like... What happens when you imagine something over? Okay, now under. Now mm-hmm. under and over. Okay. Now and back and front. Good. Except that it begins by talking about writing. Mm-hmm. Over the unwritten. What would that mean? Generally speaking? Yeah. Well, some- if somebody were to refer to something over the unwritten, what would they mean? It's hard to know, isn't it? I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I... You do that one. <laughs> well, over the written would be writing over. Either right. you rewrite or you write on top of. Sure. Right? Under the written, so over the unwritten... So just writing over Now something. you're writing. Right. Because you haven't written yet. Okay. Okay. And under the written... Things like underwriting, right? Something that is underwritten. Mm-hmm. Uh, less written. Sure. Right? Or positioned under, right. that is to say, deep meaning, right? Mm-hmm. right? What's underneath the surface, uh-huh. which is against what Crilly was interested in. Mm-hmm. And under and over and in back of and in front of or up and down or in. I mean, I don't know what to do with this except that it strikes me that he's writing. I think there's there's one level in which up it's... Up and down. Right. He's hand, like, it almost, it's almost handwriting. But literal handwriting, he, playing with the he up and down and over, mm-hmm, like, okay. you know, the, like the college ruled mm-hmm. paper, right? Yeah. So I think that that's the surface meaning, and, or that's one possible meaning. Another possible meaning is just the sheer play and joy of prepositions and position and language relationships in a Steinian way. Another one that, that I just thought of when you were talking about if we have over the unwritten and under the written as maybe a way to think about surface meaning versus deeper meaning. Mm -hmm. What happens when you then throw in all these other prepositions besides under, like besides under the surface? What happens when you just explode that distance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. And when we finally get to this, of this and this, of all that is of it, so we've got these classic modernist uh, pseudo-referential words. This is a pointer word, this, hmm. right? But clearly here, it's either writing or something that hasn't been written or something that's under the surface of the writing. Or as you said, literal writing. Or literal writing, yeah. but this and this, of all that is of it. I mean, ending this poem with it is extremely disconcerting. Mm -hmm. Can you make anything of it? The only thing I can do with of it is bring it back grammatically, referentially back to writing. Mm -hmm. Right? And how about just in time? There are many senses of that. Yeah, just in time meaning um, something that had to happen happened right when it needed to. Right. And Um, another meaning? Another meaning um, that this poem itself happened just in time it was allotted to it. Right. Another meaning? That this poem happened just in the time that it 
had to happen. <laughs> I think you just said that. <laughs> um, only a matter of time. Only in time. This is a poem that is only about, when I say time, of course, in poetry we mean rhythm, mm -hmm. right? Over the written and under the written and under and over and in back and in front of or up and down. Do you hear the time? This is only just time. Yeah. A poem can be just time. Just time spent in a poem. What's so weird about a poem that is so timely uh, in the Steinian sense of the rhythm, or up or down or in or in place of or not, of this, of this, what's so weird about a poem that's so time-focused is that it's so positional in using prepositions to locate things. Right. And what's it locating? It's locating the writing. It's extremely... This is Creeley's period where he was writing poems that sort of couldn't be written. Yeah. Yeah. Like burn up my experiment, write the poem that can't be written. It's kind of an experiment in writing a poem, use a lot of prepositions, and somehow convey rhythm, time. Use prepositions that are placemakers to create time. It's great. It's extremely experimental. All right, final thought. It's do you like this, Creeley? I do. It's a lot of fun. I like the idea that I can just be kept in a poem for some amount of time. Yeah. My final thought is to go back to that last it. I mean, it strikes me that everything that he's done, all the writing, the kind of writing, the non-signifying writing that he's doing, resolves to it, as in, that's it, man. That's the thing. That's what we're trying to do. Of all that is, of it, you get a parallel of, of this and this, as opposed to, as of of this, etc., this and that, of this and this, of all that is, comma of it. So you get a parallelism, and all that is resolves to it, the thing, the thing was, which is so much not a thing. Yeah. Well, thank you. This was fun. Yeah, it was awesome. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.